This help video is about doing an S6 to S7 update in firmware to basically make your old S6 compatible with a new S7. You might be one of the new lucky people that have managed to get hold of the S7 already and you might have been someone that's upgraded from an S6 to an S7 because they have the ability to do that. The pinouts on the S6 and S7 are very similar so that you can do an upgrade quite simply. So the purpose of this video is to basically take an S6 calibration and actually update it to the S7 latest firmware and have a look at some of the things that will need to be changed in doing so. So this version of firmware is on the S6 1.80 and what we're actually going to do is we're going to take this up to the latest S7 version which is actually on the Cyvex forum. To do that we go to Cal and then change software version. Go to S7 and then the top one which is S71650. Now if you don't have an, a profile present for this in your um, SCAL calibration software already, what you can do is you can head over to the Cyvex forum and go to the S7 area and then go to the firmware section, download the firmware executable file, run that on your computer even if you're not connected to a laptop and it will then install the profile on your machine. Or if you've connected to the ECU once, you will get the profile as well. So we're going to actually select that and let that ECU do its, the software do its thing. And then what we want to do is hit the tag because what this does is it will tag all of the new calibrations that are present. Now, as you can see, don't get too don't like, scared by it, but there are a lot of things which are different. Now, the S7 firmware has been designed and catered to allow most stuff from the S6 to import into the S7. You can see that in the I.O. configuration, the pin assignments, most of the, well, all of your items that will have been set will have copied over correctly. But you'll notice now there are lots of undefined items. These are all new items. So the first thing you need to do in order to get your ECU online is that the ECU won't come online if there's any undefined items. So if we just go to edit and then view undefined functions, we then just get a simple list of all the new undefined items. So what we want to do here, because most of these aren't going to be used or you might have a use for them when you're going down the list, you might see something that you want to add. But if not, and you're just upgrading the S6 to S7, you just need to click at the top, hold down the delete button and set these all as not connected. Once you've done that, just press escape and that area will be then changed. Now the other thing to bear in mind, that obviously there, you've now got the crank and cam noise filter which is a new feature that's been applied and also under sensors and crank and cam you'll now notice that the thresholds are based on RPM. So you can basically come in here and adjust your threshold to suit. Now one thing that's just worth noting here is that uh, before these would have just been fixed values in the S6. So have a look at the values you've got. It should have actually copied these over sensibly. It, what it would have used before is it would have used the value which was in your cranking and then your high value and then hence it's blended this map to suit. So generally you shouldn't need to touch that but it's a nice powerful feature if you wanted to be able to. Also something that's different is under the calibration switch now, if you've got a kit like the Focus or the GTR etc which has the up and down buttons using the steering wheel function, there is an option now to basically the initial calibration switch position is unchanged. What that means is when you turn your car off and back on it will hold the calibration that was basically last uh, active when the ECU shut down. If you have got a GTR or a Focus and it needs to go back to Cal 1, otherwise it can get itself in a, a bit of a loop. Uh, especially on the, the GTR, not so much, but on the Focus, yes, because it's done via the steering angle, um, the steering buttons for the steering mode. And if they're out of sync, then basically it can cause customers to be in the wrong Cal than they think they are on the dash. In which case, you just change this to Cal 1. And I'm doing that now because this is a Focus calibration. So then after that, what the next thing to talk about is the data streams. Now before in the data stream transmit content, this area was basically filled with the data that was going from the main control unit to the vehicle interface boards on our plug and play kits. Or it would have been for your custom dash if you were using just a generic version of our ECU. This basically now is purely for the CAN2 output of the ECU because the CAN1 side is now a fixed stream. I'll put the copy of the calibration with the fixed stream onto the Cyvex forum in the S7 area a bit later so that dash manufacturers can grab that or users can use that to update their dash to make sure they're using now the right content. 
But for the time being, even if you've got a plug and play kit, this table now doesn't do anything. You can set it to spare. But if you have got an S6, don't change this because it's vital. So that's just a point to point out there. What you'll then need to do is you'll need to change your transmit bus over to CAN2 if you've got an S6. So flick that over to CAN2 and that way um, all your custom uh, user definable stuff will then go out of the CAN2 bus, which I said, the, like I said, on the S6, S7i and S7 Plus, the CAN1 is fixed now. It's a fixed stream. Um, so you now need to use CAN2 if you are wanting to do custom CAN work, i.e. CAN receive, GPS modules, etc. Um, if you've only got an if you've got an S7i, which has only got the one CAN bus, then you would wire it still to the normal CAN bus out, which is on C8 and C9, and, and that will then be converted back into the ECU via the slave protocol. So one other area that is worth just looking at and pointing out that if you are going to the S7 is so, some of the new calibrations, like the fuel pump, has now got the ability to have the axis y-axis um, user configurable in the view customizing area. You can basically change your y-axis now to whatever you want. So this was actually done on the S6 as well in the version 1.88 and onwards. So this was actually a bit before 1.80. So I wanted just to point that out. So if users have got an older version of the S6 and they have got a car which is using a PWM-based fuel pump, that, 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 that will go to default values now. So you need to go open up your S6 map by the side and then copy the values into it. It's just the 3D table side of things. The other areas, like the prime duty, the run-on duty, the frequency, all that will be the same. Once you've got that set, basically all the other aspects should all copy across and work perfectly. The one area that won't is, like I said before, is the wastegate control. The wastegate control is completely changed now. So basically, you're going to have to go back in here and fill in the sections. Now, on the S7 uh, default stream calibration that I'm going to put onto the forum as well, I will fill in the uh, wastegate control with some uh, set values, or you can speak to your dealer about copying some of these in. But all of the base maps that we will provide will have this all set up. But if you are upgrading from an S6 to an S7, just be aware that you'll need to change these values. The Cybit support team is on hand to be able to help, but if you're an end user, you need to obviously speak to your dealer, and really a dealer should be doing the S6 to S7 upgrade, because as you can see, there's lots of new things, and lots of things need to just be checked over.